Have you ever wondered why you ask God for a thing and he gives you another thing? Bearing in mind that he says in his word that if you ask anything in his name, anything at all, he will do it. I am super excited that you're here to join me on today's section of Fifth Life, where we'll be talking about allowing God direct your path. And with me here is my very esteemed brother, God's own servant and convener of Good Pasture Fellowship, Mr. Emmanuel Etu. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. I'm super excited about this topic because I know it's something that many of us are struggling with. You see, um, the Bible does tell us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so that tells me that whether or not I am certain or I know that what, where I am or what God has done for me is in accordance to his will or is in accordance to what I have asked for, it's all about perspective. Did, do I trust God enough? Did I trust God's um, decision to allow certain things come in my life? And I think the typical example is Joseph. In Joseph's natural understanding, becoming a slave being sold to slavery, being betrayed by his brothers, being separated from his family for years, and you know, being abandoned, abandoned in Egypt, where, which was a godless society as far as he was concerned, um, was nothing compared to the dream, the vision, uh, the plan that I seen God had given him at first. Yes. He must have been confused. He must have been um, perplexed. Why am I here? And it was years, years of suffering and toil and confusion. But then we all know how the story developed and ended. Um, he eventually gets to the throne. The event, he's eventually exalted. But it took some time. It took a certain amount of trust. Yes. And, and, and that is, for me, what, how I reconcile what I've asked for and what God you know, gives me. Okay. Because it's just trusting that it may not initially look like what I have asked for. Okay. But I trust God is a good God. And um, if I remember the scriptures clearly, it says something about the prosperity of fools would destroy them. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes we ask for things that we're not ready for. Mm -hmm. Particularly as young people, we want to be great. We want to have a good life. We want riches, wealth, power, fame, influence. And we may not just be ready for it yet. And because God loves us so much, he may not give it to us immediately okay. or how we expect it. Just like Joseph. That is the perfect example for me, if, if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Bible tells us that through faith and patience, we inherit the promise. When you exercise your faith, um, it helps you develop a relationship with God. You begin to understand God. You begin to trust God more. It does something in you yes. over time it's it transforms you and so you don't longer you no longer see god as a genie that's just granting you all the wishes you want it's now a walk with him that is what faith is about you're trusting him day by day step by step even through the turns and the you know rough pa patch patches and confusion you know he redirects your path yes. hence why you must trust him with all your heart Lean not to your own understanding, and he will direct your path. Thank you, Thank you so much. So now, um, if I get it correctly, you're saying that our desires should be subject to the will of God. Yes. Basically. Yes. So now, are we taking off? Are we taking away the part of having a particular desire? Let's mm -hmm. say, for example, when I was done with my service, mm -hmm. I wanted to get a job as soon as possible. Yes. I was a law graduate, and I wanted to get a job. Yes. And then. I was praying, I started a three days fasting because I was home for six months and I wasn't getting any job. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know the next step that God wanted for me. I knew that I was supposed to go to law school, but I wasn't ready for law school. I just wanted mm. job immediately. And so um, I prayed, I took a three days prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And then on the third day, I got a text message. Yeah. I got an email rather for an invite. Same day, after I'd gotten home from my prayers in church, same day, I got a mail from law school <laughs> for um, my 
um, admission, admission into law school. Okay. So um, I started asking, okay, this is what I want. This mm -hmm. is what this is another thing that is coming to me. What exactly should I do? You know, but I wanted the job. I knew because I've been praying for the job. I feel like, okay, this is God answering me with and granting me this job mm -hmm. offer. And this is another thing that is before me. But, yeah. Yes. So I went for the interview and all of that. Of course, I did not pass because God obviously wanted something else for me, different from what I wanted for myself. Yeah. So are we taking away the the part of having your own heart desires? Are we taking away the part of asking for what exactly what mm -hmm. we agree? Yes. I agree. And, and it's a very good point you've made um, because people have that struggle. Yes. Um, nobody wants to just have something imposed on them. If you don't want something, you don't you don't want it, and so it's like swallowing a hard pill. Mm. And so when I there's something that God has really helped me with. There's this scripture. It says, "Delight yourself in the Lord, yes. and He will give you the desires of your heart." Okay. When you delight yourself in the things of God, and you spend more time in His presence, more time in His Word, it does something to you. It begins to change you. Mm it begins to, your appetite begins to change. The things that you desire you probably felt you wanted, yes. begin to change. Yeah. It depends on the degree to which you've delighted yourself in the Lord, mm. depending on be it in word, in worship, and in, over time. Because if, if you would agree with me, the person you are now is different from who you were five, ten yes. years ago. You've developed. Because, and in this example you, you gave, you see in retrospect now i'm actually better for you're it. better for it exactly yes. you feel like that was the right decision even though back then it didn't it, seem it didn't exactly. feel that yes. way yes true i give you another scripture the bible says abide in me if you if jesus christ said if you abide in me and i abide in you you will get whatsoever you ask mm -hmm. the question is if you abide in me and i abide in you because you have to understand we are human beings we are in, uh, and we are, as human beings, we have our carnal desires, which may not always be in our best interest, because we are limited in scope. We're not omnipotent. We're not omniscient. We're not omnipresent. We don't know everything. We can't foresee everything. And so many times, the decisions we make are based on what is in front of us, what we can physically feel, see, perceive. And so it's limited. Whereas God has a bigger picture. Okay. And so he tells us, abide in me and I in you. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that closer fellowship, more communion with him, getting to know him better and yes. better. He says, then whatsoever you ask, you will get. Why would God give us a blank check saying you will get whatsoever you ask? Because he puts a condition before it. Yes. He says, abide, abide in me and me abide in you. Exactly. He says, let us... Come to understand each other better. Come to understand where I'm coming from. And I will show you where I am coming from. You will get to understand where I am taking you. Yes. You, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I'm uh, exactly. So that transformation, hence if you delight yourself in the Lord. You, you know what to ask exactly. for. Exactly. You begin to say, thank real. you. Yes. Because then your desires are now, God, because I now understand you mm -hmm. better. I know what you have in store for me. I know you want the best for me. And your own decision is better than what I thought was better. Your desire will not be what he wants you. So your desire changes. It changes. And so I always encourage people to pray in the spirit. Because I understand what Jesus meant when he said he has left us a helper. To guide us. And for me, when I think of Romans 8. Romans 8, 26, 27. Where it says... We know not what we should pray as we ought, yes. but the Holy Spirit, God, makes intercession for us. And so for me, uh, the times where I pray in, in tongues and I'm praying in the Spirit, I begin to have a change of perspective. Ways I was thinking before begin to change. And that is what has transformed me over the years. Thank you very much. So um, while um, we understand that we have to work with God, abiding in God to understand his perfect will for us and we're now in his will 
how do we know we are being led by God? Is there usually a sign? You know, is there anything that is visible that visibly shows that God is working with us? I, would, I like to give myself as an example. And this scripture comes to mind. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word. What it's a, if you want to know when God is leading you, I always look back to the word. Okay. Because the Bible says the entrance of his word brings light. And if I look at my life, the very first time I perhaps felt the leaning or the inclination towards ministry, it was through the word. Mm. I was reading casually um, Jeremiah chapter 1, about verse 5, verse 6, where he said, um, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I have called you, I have ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Yeah. And I have read that scripture before many times, but then it literally leaped out and I felt it was speaking to me. There was a personal connection, revelation of the word to me. And so for me, because the Bible says the word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. I believe that as we walk with God, as you walk in the spirit, the word of God begins to speak to you because it's a living word you will begin to see things in scripture that apply to you. Okay. Your own remark. My, hey, thank you. My own, my own revelation, my own remark. It's, it's, it, and, and that same scripture, that Jeremiah 1, that spoke to me years ago, and um, put set me on this path, can apply to many other people. It's not just me. Anyone else to whom God is able to reveal that word to will yes. see it. And so is the case with many stories in the Bible, many passages in the Bible. We all just need to have that fellowship with God to lead us into what is for us. And then it's, that is how you know, because your confidence will no longer just be in what someone said. You've seen something that it was some, not, nobody told me. Nobody called me and said, oh, you would, you would pastor a fellowship, you would speak to people about God. No. I, the oh, the, the, it, it, it the came from the word. Mm. And whenever I had doubts, whenever I had fears or concerns, I, I didn't have to question the person who told me, be it a man or, or I don't know, or maybe a dream. It, I just had to go to the word. I didn't have to check whether or not, maybe I was mistaken in what I saw in my dream. Maybe I didn't hear clearly what that man God told me. It was just a situation of what did God tell me in his word? Yes. That does not change. And because of that, it helped me stay rooted in what God had ordained for me. At the same time, it doesn't mean you can't make mistakes. Of course. It doesn't mean that you can't fall. The Bible says, even back then when I knew, I still had many rough patches and many, and, 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 and many parts in my life that I needed to develop. And... The Bible tells us that a righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up. The question you ask yourself is, why is he a righteous man? Is it because of himself? No. The Bible says we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Because of what God has done for us, Jesus Christ has done for us. Even though we make mistakes in our walk with God, even though maybe God had told us something before and we went our own way and, you know, we lost the path, we have the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins. And so though you may fall, you can always get back up. Yes. Jesus Christ has paid the price. Mm -hmm. We are the righteousness of God in him. It is a position we have spiritually in God. And even when we sin and we make mistakes, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus has told us, confess your sins. I will clean you with my blood, which will cleanse you from all your sins and all, all your unrighteousness, and you come back to me. And so you will find your way back to God. And there's this wonderful example I heard someone share one day. You know, we all use, I believe most of us use Google Maps. Yes. You're driving your car. You've set the location on the GPS and you're going somewhere. If you take a wrong turn, Google Maps doesn't start shouting and say, Hey, hey, hey. You have taken the wrong turn. Yes. I've warned you. <laughs> I've warned you. You're this yeah, yeah, driver. No. <laughs> Google Maps simply says, Please take the next turn, redirecting you back to the path that it originally set yes. for you. And that is the thing that happened in my life. That is the thing that happens in many believers' lives. Yes. If you stay close to God, 
and you keep listening, even if you've made a mistake, even where you thought you heard God in a particular area and you missed that turn, you just the, the, the solution is not to get angry or offended and say God has abandoned you. You just keep listening because it's that still small voice. He will keep whispering to you. He won't beat you on the head with it. He won't shout on you. He won't, um, he, won't, he won't curse at you. Just like Google Maps. The voice is steady. The word is steady. Just go back to it and you will find the answer. It will redirect you to your original route. Now, it may take longer if you've made too many mistakes. But then the truth is, he has never left you. He's never forsaken you. The Google Maps is always there. You just stay connected to the internet. Stay connected to God. You will be redirected to your path. And that's it. That is honestly how I believe it is for every believer through the word of God and by the spirit. Thank you so much for that. Okay, God. so um, finally, I would like to ask, Yes. why is it important to have God direct our path? Good. You know? Why? You see, the first thing I'd like to remind myself is that this part in the scripture, it says, God, you created us and we not ourselves. Yes. God created us. We are created beings. And there is a creator, where, an originator of where we came from. And that is why he tells us, I believe it's in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, he says, I know the plans and thoughts I have for you. Plans of good, not of evil. Plans of peace. To bring you to an expected end. He knows. Because he made us. He yes. directed us. He created us. And so... Because he's the creator and we are the creation, it is literally impossible for us to truly navigate our lives ourselves because he has the blueprints. He has the master plan for our lives. And he says, I know. He tells us in German, he says, I know yes. the thoughts and plans I have for you. When you were a baby, you, you were clueless of where you came from. You've grown and you're beginning to walk in this life and you're trying to figure things out. And then God tells you, I know. Come to me and I'll tell you. If you look at Jeremiah 29, if you look at the following verses after that statement, he says, call out to me. I think it's in the following verse. He says, he says, he says cry out to me. He says, seek my face. You will find me. I will answer you. He was speaking to the children of Israel then, but he's also speaking to each and every one of us as Christians, as believers, as his children. He says, call out to me. Seek me out. And you will find me. And... The truth is, once again, I will give you an, uh, another example. This applies to everybody on this earth, every created being, every created being. You can find your life, your destiny in the Bible. Yes. Everyone. And I'll tell you why and why I know this. You see, there's this, it's, it's one of the best examples I've ever heard. It was by my, I heard it from my pastor, that's um, Pastor Luby Johnson. You know what he said? He said, how many letters in the alphabet? 26. 26 letters in the alphabet. With those 26 letters, how many books have we written in this world? Millions, billions of stories. Because from what? Just 26 letters of the alphabet. You create words, you create sentences, you create paragraphs, you create chapters, so you create much. books. You can, everyone can have a book in this world, right? But what created it? Just 26, 26 letters of the wow. alphabet. Profound. How many books in the Bible do we have? We just have 66 chapters in the Bible. With those 66 chapters, every individual can pick out something and construct their destiny. You can get a part from Joseph. You can get a part from Abraham. You can get a part from um, Paul. And create your own story based on the revelation that God shows you in each of these people's lives. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You see, therefore, if, if we can create billions of books and we're still making more, from just 26 letters of the alphabet, how much more? We have 66 chapters of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, so many stories, so many things to pick out from. Everyone can find something for themselves there and create your own story according to how you work with God, you will find your destiny in there. And that is what I know. That is how I know that it is with God you will find your destiny. You mm -hmm. will find your path. That is how. That is what gives me the assurance. Yes. And then we have the help of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Jesus Christ said, I'm not leaving you alone. 
He says, I've given you the Holy Spirit. He will teach you. He will help you. If there's a place you're confused, whether you know whether this part applies to you or not, the Holy Spirit is always there. You just have to listen. You just have to connect through prayer and the Word. Yes. And you'll get your answer. That's personally, my, that's been my story. That has been my life. And that is what I believe everyone has an opportunity to as well. Okay, so, um, you know, we have people who um, are presently living outside the will of God and doing yep. very well, very successful. Yep. They're probably engineers, doctors, but that might likely not be what God actually intended or planned for them to do. Yes, very true. I, okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, and you're, you're right. Not everyone has access to the word. Not everyone has heard the full gospel um, that we have an opportunity here. And so... Whether or not these people are in line with God's will and outside his will, it's usually something that we may struggle to reconcile. Yeah? I always like to start from this perspective that God is a good God. Yes. God is a faithful God. I always like to judge him faithful. And, and I know he's fair. And there is a story in the Bible, a couple of stories. For example, if you remember the story of Colinius, Cornelius in the Bible, he was, the Bible says in the book of Acts, he was simply just a regular man. He wasn't a Jew. He wasn't um, amongst the first disciples. He was, the Bible says he was just a good man who was given arms. He was given to the point. He was just a nice man. And the Bible says that God reached out to Peter to go and meet him to go and enlighten him on the gospel, bring salvation to him and his household, and to save him. What does that teach us? I don't know where everyone else is in their life, be it Christian, be it non-Christian. But what I do know is that God is always looking at the heart. Yes. God is always looking at the honesty and the humility of your heart. He's always looking at whether or not you have an inclination towards him. And one way or another he would find people to reach out to those who might be lost who might be working outside his will so far as they have the good heart and the right heart and you will bring them to him like he did with Colinius. there's also another scripture this bible says there was an ethiopian who was going on his way and he was um struggling with the scriptures studying the scriptures and bible says i think it was philip god took philip to him yes to help him and so it shows you that God is always looking for ways to reach out to people whose hearts are turned towards him. The Bible says he's near to those whose hearts are turned towards him. He's, he's always seeking to help them. And the truth is, it's the same. That's, and this is New Testament we're talking about. The same thing applies to Old Testament as well. Even the original fathers of the faith, Abraham. Abraham came from a pagan land. You know, he knew not God. He just had the right heart. And that was where God started from, his heart. Yes his heart. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible that tells us that um, it's in Romans. I believe Romans chapter 1 or 2. It says uh, even the Gentiles who do not have a law it says are a law unto themselves. What does that mean? It just simply means let me just paraphrase. It's saying that God looks at people's hearts and whether or not their hearts are right towards him. Even whether or not they do not know it at that time Yes, they may not know his word, they may not know the things we know, but God is always looking for a way mm. to reach out to them, which is why it's important why we keep sharing the gospel, why we keep sharing the message, because you never know where this message might lead. You don't know where who might hear it, but he's always looking for a way. Just and he will, even a tiny inclination. Ex exactly. And you reach out to them. Mm. He will get them. He will help them. God is a fair God. You know, there's a story, you know, um, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, the walls of Jericho. How did the Israelites get into Jericho? The Bible says there was a woman, Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. Exactly. No, From a exactly. godless society, evil society. But she had a right heart towards God. And even though God was going to, you know, destroy Jericho and deal with those people, he located Rahab and her family members and he kept them. He said, these ones that get towards me, showing you that he's always looking for a way 
if you do not know because maybe you didn't have the right background yes. you didn't grow up in a christian home you didn't um you've never had parents who took you to church you you know and you or you're in a society where it's not the gospel is not permitted have no fear god is always looking for a way to help you and he can do it yes. he will do it the question is you trust him you keep hoping and you know he will direct your path that's what i understand Thank you praise god much. finally we have come to the end of today's conversation with mr emmanuel and we know you have been blessed please let us know your opinion in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel god bless you